Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video, we're going to see the simplest way to host a Laravel based website on a shared web hosting. So let's get this started. So the platform that I'm going to be using for this video is called as Hostinger. And the reason why that I'm using this is because I find the prices to be pretty cheap in this website. And also the interface that they're offering for the backend is pretty neat and unique. And also if you're from India, then I think you might also find their prices to be pretty reasonable. So if you want, you can opt for this or you can use any other hosting service which provides shared web hosting. Okay, so before going further, if you don't know how to buy and set up a domain and hosting service, then I'll link a video in the description down below. You can go there and check that out. And in that video, I've already displayed how you can do that. And once you're done with that, you can carry on from here. Okay, so let's get started. So let me log into my account first. So this is the dashboard. And for this video, we're gonna use the domain called as packetcode.tech. So let's open that, click on manage. So this is the control panel for that particular hosting. So there's actually two ways that you can deploy your website onto this. The first way is to actually use the marketplace and install Laravel directly. So every hosting service has their own version of marketplace. And in this hosting, we have it called as auto installer. So in here, you can search for Laravel and here it is. So click on that. And in here, you can give the details that you need for that particular website. You can select the HTTPS version if you want, and then you can give a subfolder if you want, and the files will be installed in that particular folder, or you can just leave it empty as it is. Then you can set up a username, a password, an email, and a website title. And also you can change the version, but it's currently set to 5.8.35, and that's the latest one in this. So there are actually two main issues with using this method. The first one is that you can't use a locally created Laravel project. You have to start from scratch once again. So that's the main problem. And also the second problem is that the Laravel version is gonna cap out at 5.8.35. So you can't go beyond that. So if you wanna use the latest Laravel version, which is eight currently, then you have to go with the second method. So let's now see how we can do that. So let me close this off. So to use the second method, you need two main things. The first one is that you have to have a locally developed Laravel based project and it should be working currently on your system. And the second one is that you have to have access to your database credentials. So if I go to my databases section and in MySQL databases, as you can see here, I have a database called as packet code with this particular username and one password that I've already set. So I can use these details to set up the database. So here is my project and this is just an empty Laravel based project. I haven't done anything in this. So this is just the boiler template that you get when you create a new project using Laravel. What you have to do is that you have to just transfer all of these files onto your server. So there's two ways of doing this. The first way is to use an FTP client like FileZilla. So you can use that. So for the host and username, what you have to do is that you have to go to files and go to FTP accounts. And from here, you can use this host name, username and your account password if you want, or you can create another user with a particular username and password. And you can use that to actually connect to your server through the FTP client. If you do that, you will have access to the directory on the right hand side. So that's one way of doing this. And the second way is to use the online file manager that they provide. So I'm gonna go with that one for now. So this is my directory. And what you have to do is that you have to transfer all your files into here. So we have to go to domains. And in the domain section, you have packetcode.tech, right? So you have to go inside that. And in here, in the public underscore HTML folder, you have to transfer all the files. So with previous versions of Laravel, what you could do is that you could just transfer all the files directly into this. So this is my project, right? So what we used to do previously was that we just copied all the files that we had in here and placed them inside public underscore HTML. But with Laravel newer versions, what happened is that index.php that we had here was placed inside another folder called as public. So what you have to do is that you have to open public, the folder that we have in the local development, and all the files inside of this have to be copied and placed here. So let me add them here, click on upload and those files will be uploaded. So what you have to do next is that you have to go back one directory. So you have to go to packetcode.tech root directory. So in here we have the public underscore HTML, right? So in here you have to create a new folder. So I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna call it as blog. Okay, so let's create that. So now inside this blog folder, you just have to transfer all the remaining files. So we have this, right? So you have to select everything except the public folder and you can just drag and drop this here and that's gonna work. But since we have a large number of files, it's gonna take a lot of time to transfer them. So what you can do is that you can just right click on this and compress them. And I'm gonna name it as let's say blog. And that's gonna create a zip folder for us. So now just drag and drop that particular zip folder and upload it here. 
then right click on this and click on extract. So now it's going to ask the location of where you want to actually extract those files. So as you can see here, it's telling me that define dot as your location if you want to extract the compressed file in the current folder. And since that's what I want to happen, I'll just give a dot and click on extract and that's going to extract all the files into the same folder. So once the files have been extracted, the next thing that you have to do is that you have to open the environment file. And in here, you have to make three main changes. The first one is that you have to add the database, username and the password of your database account. So you have to do that. So you can go to your control panel once again and in the databases section, go to MySQL databases. And if you haven't created a database as of yet, please create one. Then after you're done with that, you can just take these details, the username, the database name and the password and add all of those into these three values. And also you can change the app URL from here and update it to your domain right now. Then you can leave everything as it is and click on save and close. Apart from this, you also have to make another change. So go back one directory, go to the packet code root directory and in here go to public underscore HTML once again. And in the public underscore HTML folder, open the index.php file. And in here you have to make two more changes. So if you observe clearly right now, this is pointing to autoload.php which is present inside the project folder. But the thing is that what it's actually doing is that it's going one step back and it's searching for vendor. So it's currently searching for vendor inside the packet code.tech root folder. But in the packet code.tech root folder, we only have two folders. One is blog, the second one is public underscore HTML. There we don't have any vendor folder, right? So this vendor folder is actually present inside the blog folder that we had created. So what you have to do is that you have to type in blog and slash. So what's going to happen is that it's going to go back one directory. It's going to search for blog folder and that is going to go for vendor and in that is going to go for autoload.php. The same thing is going to happen here as well. You have to just type in blog and slash. So this blog is just the folder name that we had used previously to create that folder, right? So whatever name that you have given to that folder where you have extracted all the remaining files, you have to add that name here. Okay. And once you have added that, click on save and close. So once those are done, you can just directly go to your website. And if you don't have any configurations for the database, then automatically the project will be opened. But if you do have any database configurations, then we have to handle them as well because it's going to show some errors if you have any database related queries in the home page. So what you have to do is that if you have an SSH access to your account, like the hosting servers, then this process is going to be pretty easy since we can directly type in PHP artisan migrate and that's going to add all the tables inside the database. But if you don't have an SSH access, what you can do is that you can go to the local development project and you have the PHP my admin, right? You can go to PHP my admin of your local development. From there, you can export the tables for the database that you had created. You can export all the tables into a single file and then take that file and go to PHP my admin of this particular database. Go to PHP my admin and in here, go to the database and you can click on import and select the file that you had just exported in your local development then click on go and all the tables will be added to this particular database. And also if there is any error saying that it could not find that database, what you have to do, you have to take this database name and open the file that you had just exported. In that file, change the database name from the previous one to this particular name and then upload it once again and that's going to be uploaded. But if you have an SSH access, what you can do is that you can go to advanced section here, go to the SSH access then copy this command and establish an SSH connection. So let's copy this and open the terminal. And if you're on Windows system, open the PowerShell, then paste it and click on enter. Then it's going to ask for your password, type in the password. And once you have access to your bash terminal, list out the directories. So as you can see here, we have three folders. The first one is the domains folder, right? So you have to go into that CD into domains. And in the domains folder, we have packet code that we are using right now. So CD into that. In that we have the blog and the public underscore HTML. So what you have to do is that you have to go into the blog folder and in here you have to type in PHP artisan migrate. As you can see here, the migration has been done successfully. So now if you go to the database once again and refresh it. So as you can see here, new tables have been added. So these are all the tables which were created in the local development. So now if you go to the website once again 
as you can see here it's still live because there wasn't any errors in this and since we don't have any linking with the database as of yet since this is just a basic template it's gonna work fine but if you do have your database integration then make sure to do this and that's gonna work perfectly fine so that's how you deploy a laravel based website onto a shared web hosting so that's it for this video guys i hope you like what i've seen till now if you did then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well thanks so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next video